What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's How To. Today is a very exciting day for me. As you can tell, I've been out doing a little bit of shopping. What I've decided to do is switch my tool platform. So those of you that have been watching my channel for a while, know that I've been using Ryobi tools for the past four years or so. Absolutely no problems, love them to bits. It's time for a change. People might be thinking out there, how did you go from Ryobi to Milwaukee? The simple answer is, I like to think of it in terms of cars. When you buy a Ryobi, it's basically a Toyota Corolla. You get great value for money, you know what you're gonna get, um, great after sales service, it's perfect and you don't have any headaches. However, when you want that little bit more higher expectation, a bit more higher performance, the Mercedes-Benz of tools is the Milwaukee and that's exactly what I've decided to upgrade to. So today I spent a bit, uh, just over $1,500. You guys won't believe the discount that I got. There's one more tool which I'll get into a little bit later, but for these tools here today, I got an unbelievable discount. So I'll run into that also a little bit later. Make sure if you haven't already, like, comment and subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna be having a new tool brought into my collection um, probably once every two to three weeks coming forth. Um, so I'll have individual reviews, but for today, let's get straight into it. We're gonna be doing the unboxing and review of the four piece combo that I've bought. Let's do this. So the first thing you need to do before buying tools is do your research. I had a look into Milwaukee and found out they have a roadshow sale on starting from today, which is the 28th of June, up until the 30th of June. So that's the end of financial year sale. What they're offering is 20% um, store credit back on your purchase price. So if you spend $1,000, you get $200 in store credit to spend back on power tools. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I spent here about $1,500, so I got $300 in store credit. Not only that, what I also did was I took down um, every single individual item that I was interested in. I wrote down the individual purchase price on a side, including batteries and everything like that. And then what I did was I went through all the combo kits to find out exactly how much value there was in each product. This one here happened to be the most value for money. Um, and what we've got here is the four piece combo. So we've got the hammer drill, we've got the impact driver, um, we've got a 125 millimeter angle grinder and also the SDS rotary hammer drill. So these ones here are all from the Gen 3 series. The price on this one here was 11.55, so 1,155 in Australian dollars. Um, the retail value, so when you break, the, break down every little individual item, Mind you, this four piece combo kit here not only comes with three batteries and the four pieces, it also came with this compact vacuum cleaner that I've got here and I'm leaving this one here for a separate individual review. Um, so this one here came as a bonus uh, with this combo. So for 11.55, I got all of those items. I got the four piece combo, three batteries and the vacuum cleaner, which I worked out to a total retail value of just over $1,900. So it was actually just shy of $2,000. Um, that gives me a saving of $850 just by buying this. So I've got almost 40% off simply by doing my shopping and crack it, calculating all the math um, to see which uh, combo kit actually has the best value. So for me, this one here was a definite. First one that I was going for was this. I got the uh, vacuum cleaner with it as well. And then I also bought a um, the switch pack or switch bag um, backpack sprayer. So these ones are still new in Australia. I know you guys overseas have already got them, but we've only just had them released last week and good stuff for me. I got the uh, my hands on the first one in Australia. So I found out today that my one was actually the first one that's been ordered. So I'll have that in a few days and I'll also be doing a review on that. That one there costs, I think, $429 um, for just the, um, the sprayer and also one bottle. So I'll get into a different review on that one there. I'm gonna show you guys what that one is capable of and why I bought it. So we've got $11.55, plus I've also got $429. Um, so that brought me up a fair bit. What I did do, however, was after I purchased that amount, that was about 15 something, um, 15, yeah, it was 15.50, so 15.80, something like that. I had about 300 and something dollars in credit. So what I went out and bought was the pack out kit. Now I've got already the job site backpack, which is unbelievably awesome. Very happy with it and it's in perfect condition till now. But what I went out and bought was they've got the pack out edition. It's a little bit bigger than the job site one and you can put these pack out toolboxes on the bottom, which I absolutely love. So on the bottom here, we can simply clip this in and then I can carry these two toolboxes 
around with me on my bag. So I thought that was an unbelievable invention, something that's definitely gonna come in handy for me. What I'm gonna do is a separate review on this one here as well, especially because I've already got the job site bag, so I wanna do a good comparison video between the new Packout backpack and also the job site backpack. So these ones here, plus I also got a 19 piece drill bit set, which I'll have a review on individually as well. Um, so all in all, I've got a total value of just under $3,000. $139 here for the bag, and we got $50 for each one of these boxes. Um, plus this one here was I think around $30, $40, $50. So all in all, just under $3,000 value, and I paid $15, $50, something along the lines of that. Almost 50% off um, simply by doing my research and doing some homework. So these ones here will be left for a separate review. For now, I wanna open up this box here because I'm super excited. It's surprisingly a small box. I wasn't really expecting it to be this small, um, especially because there's four tool bags in there, three batteries, the charger, and also a tool bag. So the box for the uh, compact vacuum cleaner is actually bigger than this one here. But as you can hopefully see from the back here, it's nice and tight, but you can see it's starting to bulge out because there's so much jam packed in here. Let's get these stuff out of the way and then we'll get into opening this one here up. So some people might be wondering if I loved my Ryobi tools so much, why did I switch over to Milwaukee? Um, the simple reason for that is number one, they're not geared at contractor or commercial grade use. Um, number two, I was using them for pretty much exactly what you weren't supposed to be using them for. They did handle very, very well. However, what I did find was after four years of using it, um, the batteries have taken a beating. So I've had those tools now for just over four years and all four batteries went at the same time. So I'm getting about five minutes worth of um, run time now on each battery. And to replace those five amp batteries, I'm looking at $100 per battery. That's $400 just to replace the batteries to use back on old tools that aren't really specifically designed for that application. So for me, I thought it was gonna be a smarter idea to kind of jump into the commercial grade tools and that's exactly what we've done. So let's get this thing here open. I might not actually need my blade. Well, you know what? I'll open it up from wherever it's bulging out from already. Let's see what's in. Oh, that's actually a nice bag. I was a bit worried. I was speaking to the um, the sales rep at the store. Um, I bought this from Sydney Tools, and I was actually a bit concerned about the uh, tool bag that it comes in. I thought it was going to be a real ugly bag, as most um, tool competitors usually are. When you buy a combo kit, usually the bag that it comes with is pretty horrible to be honest. I've made that mistake a few times, you end up throwing out the bag, but have a look at this. Now that is not an ugly bag at all. Let's try and pull this out. That's actually a very nice bag. So let's see what's in here. We've got a book that no one's ever going to read. This one here is the guard for the, circular, uh, for the grinder. Again, more bed work, bedtime reading material. So this is actually pretty compacted in here nicely. We've got a 5 amp battery, 5 amp battery. We've got the handle for the drill driver for a nice little impact. This is what I was waiting for. So we've got here the impact driver. Got to love the smell of fresh tools. So this one is actually really grippy. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I haven't actually um, handled one of these uh, Milwaukee tools um, on the job. The main tools I've been going for are the Ryobi and my Dewalt. So I haven't really had the chance to kind of play around with these tools, so it's gonna be a good um, test to see just how well they live up to the expectations or the reputation that Milwaukee has. So this is actually a really, really nice feel. It's very short in the hand. Um, my finger barely sticks past um, the, the collet there, so it's actually very, very short. It'll be interesting to see how much power this thing can produce. We've got the hammer drill. Once again, surprisingly, they're actually pretty light, especially this one here. Feels like it's maybe a kilo or so. Very, very light, about two pounds, very light on the hand. This one, and you gotta love that. If you guys heard, very solid. So that's kind of probably the biggest difference I find between Ryobi and the high-end competitors is pretty much in the make. So um, what I found is they tend to use a lot of plastic uh, materials instead of metal. So you can see here, most of this um, housing and stuff is all made out of metal. So it's nice to know that if you do drop it, you don't run the risk of cracking anything. Even though I never had any problems with cracking the Ryobi, but just in case, this one here, once again, nice. 
So we've got the chuck on the top, which is a steel chuck. I love that. Speed, it's two speed here. Also, we've got on the impact driver, I'll try to zoom in on that. We've got four functions down the bottom. So I think that's three speed. Um, so one, two, and three, and then we've got a soft tapping mode. So that'll be definitely very interesting to test out and see how well that on there works. Um, I've never had that before. I'm assuming this one here, yeah, that's for the um, angle grinder. I remember reading online somewhere that it's a toolless change. I hope that we're able to replace um, or remove the both the blade and also um, the guard toolless because a lot of you probably noticed that on my Ryobi um, angle grinder, I don't have the guard on there. I know, I know, safety, but um, I tend to get that angle grinder in a lot of tight areas and the guard gets in the way. So to remove that guard is a pain and then to put it back on is another pain. So I avoid the pains and I just technically um, leave the guard off here. Yeah. So ho hopefully this tool here um, won't be needed. I'm hoping that it's a toolless, but we'll find out. Once again, we've got another handle. And I'm not sure what this one here is. That's another handle. I want got a fair few handles in here. We've got the depth gauge as well for the hammer drill. And here is my nice grinder. Let's have a look at this. Now that is super comfortable. We've got a dead man switch on here somewhere uh, down the bottom. So we've got a little dead man switch. Have to click that in before you can press the trigger. That's actually a really good thing. Um, toolless change is very interesting because it did say toolless change on the um, description. It might actually be only for the guard. So we'll find out with that. I'll get into a bit more detail with that once I go into the individual reviews. So reminding you guys, if you've got any suggestions on anything you'd like me to see, um, you guys would like to see um, me try out in the videos that are upcoming, a lot of versus videos, com competitions to see um, how well these things really perform because they've got such a high reputation. Um, they are obviously more expensive than the average tool. Um, so I want to see just how well they can handle. So we'll put these all to the test and see how well they function. Once again, we've got now my charger. So this one here is the rapid charge, which is good. I'm not too sure how slow the slow or the regular charge. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how quickly this one here charges. So I don't really have anything to compare with. Um, and then we've got the SDS rotary hammer. So this one here's got a bit of weight to it. Feels like it's about three kilos. Um, but once again, that's, oh, this is nice. I didn't know, it's got a little springy section up on top and that absorbs the impact. So that'll be interesting to see how much of the impact that'll actually absorb while we're trying to go through concrete. So I've got a lot of awesome ideas for this one here, um, but I'm not gonna release anything just yet. I'm gonna save it. Um, so that I'll leave that for a versus video where we're gonna actually test out this to see how strong it is. Um, but I'm not gonna give away too much information. Nice. These switches, that seems a bit tight. There we go. It's got a button on top to actually release it which is interesting. None of the other SDS drills that I've seen have a button on there to turn that over. And then it clicks into place once again. So that's pretty interesting that they've got that on there. Um, I've never really had anybody tell me that the, um, the lever moves by itself or they've accidentally bumped it whilst in action. Um, so definitely interesting to see how much power this has. Let's see if these batteries have any juice in it. Nice batteries, they're not they're actually not that big. So they, look, they feel smaller than the Ryobi 5 amp batteries. Um, in terms of weight, I think they're actually pretty light as well. They're lighter than the, um, the other one. See if it's got any juice in it. It's only got one bar. Let's see if we can get a rev out of it. Nice. All right, so I'm gonna put these on charge and then we'll quickly go and test them outside and see just how well they function. So I'll just show you guys the bag once it's loaded. You can see here, I've got so much more room. I can put my whole arm in there and still have more room. Um, so everything's in the bag apart from the charger and the battery. So there's still two batteries in here, but I've got so much more room. It's actually a really deceiving bag. It's got a lot more room in there than I thought. But another interesting thing here, if we have a look at this rapid charger, it's been sitting here for about five minutes on charge. It went from one bar to three bars in five minutes. So this one here is super interesting. I can't wait to see how long before it actually becomes fully charged. Once it is, I'll see you guys in the garage. All right guys, so the battery is now fully charged. It took about 20 to 25 minutes to completely charge this thing, which is unreal. 
Apparently the combo kit that I bought uh, came with a rapid charger. I didn't know such thing existed. Um, so 25 minutes completely charged. I'm used to waiting about 45 minutes to an hour depending on the size of the battery that I'm charging. So this is pretty impressive. The little um, bit holder that we've got here, to be honest, I don't really like. It doesn't really hold the drill bit properly. or well, the one that I've got anyway. But for me on the impact driver, I never actually switch bits. Very, very rarely um, do I switch from the Phillips. Um, and, and when I do, I'm usually going for a different bit completely. So what I'm going to do is switch it over to a magnet bit like I've got on my old Dewalt drill. And that way I can attach the screws over to the side. Something else that I like is this belt clip. Um, I'm not usually a big fan of belt clips. I don't really use them that often. Um, but this one here sits nice and wide away from the drill. So what I found was this one here, because it's so far away, if I'm to hang this in either my pant pocket, um, in the pocket of my pants, or also the uh, tool belt, it sits away from my leg, so I don't get that constant annoying tap. It does sit a bit further away, and it's a bit easier to actually hook on. So we've got here a Phillips head bit. We'll test it out and see what difference we've got here. So three speeds once again, and then we've got the self-tapping mode. To be 100% honest, I'm not familiar with the self-tapping mode. It's a new kind of technology and I'll have to actually play around with it before I can give a bit more info or feedback on that. But we've got one, two, and three basic speeds. Speed one, pretty slow. Speed two, that's pretty much the speed that I'm usually used to. So if we listen to the Dewalt, Very, very similar speed, and that's only on speed two. So if I put it on speed three, that's what I like to call crazy mode. That has got an unbelievable amount of power. Compared to the Dewalt. So let's test this one here out. We've got some 30 mil screws, very standard screws. We'll test it out, we'll leave it on speed three, and we'll try this one here out. So that's got a lot of driving power. You can see there I countersunk that pretty easy. We'll try put it on the self-tapping mode. Once again, I'm not too familiar what it does exactly, um, apart from self-tapping apparently. So we'll try it out later on. Um, but what I have noticed is it's got a delayed response when you pull the trigger. So if you have a listen, it's got a slow initial build up um, to that speed compared to when we have it on normal uh, speed level. Instant power, delayed power. So let's try it on the delayed one, see what difference it makes. Let it bite on first. It just basically controls the amount of um, torque or tension on that screw, um, but we'll play around with that later. Let's switch this over here and we'll test out something that's a little bit more heavy duty. So we've got here 100 mil um, 10 gauge bolt or screw. This one is usually used for decking, so it is fairly decent sized screw. Let's switch bits over and we'll test this one here out. So this goes 50 mil through the uh, pine and we've got some timber under that as well. So let's see how well this one here handles. We'll switch it over. I'll leave it on the control. Nah, we'll put it on crazy mode. Let's try it out on crazy mode. All right, one, two, three. That's got a lot of power. So this is going to have a lot of fun with the upcoming videos. We're going to test it out and see just how strong this thing is. But for today, very happy with what I've got so far. Let's move on to the next one. So this time around, we've got the hammer drill driver. You can see here, this one here came with a bit. Um, so these ones here do fit a lot better than the long ones that I had. Um, but once again, I really don't use these very often. So I might switch one, this one here over to the magnet again. Once again, belt clip. It's nice and comfortable. I was initially worried. Um, I've had a lot of people tell me that they're a little bit heavy, um, but I find these pretty much the same weight as my regular drills that I've been using. Not too bad. <clears throat> the buttons with the thumb, it's nice and easy to click over into reverse. Um, when it comes to forward, I do have big hands, so maybe that's why. And these are pretty compact. It's a fairly short tool. So for me to click in the button, I have to slide my finger just that little bit back. Not the end of the world, but for me, I would have liked it if the button was a bit further forward, um, but that's not too bad. Like I said, once again, maybe that's because I've got big hands. What I do like, however, is the handle that comes with it. Nice and easy to install the handle. And that's one of the reasons why I've actually gone with Milwaukee is because the innovation behind it. Ryobi has set the standard pretty high um, with a lot of inno inno innovative. Innovative. We'll stick to innovative. So a lot of um, innovation behind them and a wide variety of tools. So this one here clicks on nice and easy and then we can lock that in place by tightening it back on. I think I'll over loosen that one. 
So once that's on nice and tight, we've got our nice handle to go off that. So it's good because I don't always use this handle so I can easily take it off and reinstall it. Let's put on the battery. Nice, a lot of power coming through that. So we'll see how well this one here handles. We've got the Speedball Max we're going to test it out with just to trial it out for now. Two speeds. So let's leave it on low speed and we'll trial this one here out. It's got a um, steel chuck on there which I'm pretty happy with. I really don't like it when I come with a plastic uh, chuck on that. So let's open this one here up. And ratchet action, very important. Make sure that's on nice and tight. Let's try it on on a clean spot here on low speed. That was actually pretty fast for low speed. We've got here, remembering, 50 mil pine. Love that pine smell. Um, so we'll put that up on high speed. Once again, find a nice clean spot. Oh, this one here was a low speed. So that makes more sense. So that one there was a low speed. Once again, we'll kick it over to high. Nice. We're going to have a lot of fun with this one here. So let's move on to the angle grinder. So this time around, we've got the 125mm angle grinder. Um, it does have a dead man switch on it, so you can't press the trigger unless you flick that dead man switch down there, and then you can press that trigger in. Um, this one here is a 125mm. I'm used to the 115, um, but I should have got the 125 a long time ago. It's a lot easier to cut steel with it. Um, and what I do like about this, it's got the handle location for both sides. So you can put this handle on here, and it's also got, looks like a little spring or something. I think that's to absorb the impact, but I'll get into that once I get a chance later on, um, on the in-depth review view very very nice and comfortable it's a little bit top heavy um, obviously without the battery once the battery is installed then it's completely balanced and nice and easy to handle um, the guard itself is easy to maneuver around so there's a little trigger on top if you press that then you can move it around and reposition um, your guard however you like um, you guys have seen in most of my videos I technically don't have the guard on, on a lot of the videos that's because I get the grinder in um, tight areas um, especially on existing drainage or anything like that where I need to cut it so I technically take off the guard sometimes just to get in those tight areas um, but in order to take off this guard completely you do have to remove these nuts here and then you can remove the guard so you can't remove the guard unless you actually remove these nuts now one thing that I am slightly disappointed in um, you still have to use the tool the problem with these tools is whenever you need it, you don't seem to find it. It always disappears when you need it. Um, so once again, you still will have to use a tool to change over your blades. Um, not the end of the world. I mean, nobody's really come up with a toolless one as far as I know. Um, but it would be nice to have a toolless blade change option on there. Um, but this one here is pretty nice. It's got a little L shape on there. So hopefully that will lodge in my bag somewhere and it won't actually get lost under my tools. Um, so let's trial this one here out and we'll switch over. One more thing, it's got little filters on the bottom. So these filters, it did come with a spare one in case um, so that your machine doesn't clog up with any dust that it breathes in. So once again, replace that and we can clean that filter out as well. So let's trial this one here out. 125 mil. Oh, I might actually need a blade. So we've got our cutting blade on. Let's test this out and see how well it handles the 50 by 50 steel post. What I do find interesting with this is that it doesn't have any lag whatsoever. So usually when you're using a regular grinder, you find that it kind of gets to a point where it's starting to have too much of a load on it. This one here just keeps on eating straight through it. So it'll be interesting to see um, and compare this one here to a corded version later on in my videos. Now with regards to the SDS rotary hammer drill, I'm not actually going to test this one here out. I'm not going to drill through any concrete around the house. So we'll leave that one for another video on the individual review. So there you have it guys, that's the first couple of tools for my new Milwaukee platform. Um, I'll be buying a new tool every two or three weeks, so if you've got any suggestions or questions, anything you'd like to see, put them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to address it. As always, like, comment and subscribe. Until next time I'm Bill, thanks for watching Bill's Out Too.